Hello, and welcome to a brief demonstration of the web user interface for the LiveVault cloud-based backup and recovery service for Windows and Linux servers. LiveVault has been crafted specifically to back up busy, active servers, such as Exchange servers, SQL servers, and file servers. The LiveVault backup service has been in production use for over 10 years and employs redundant vaulting sites around the world. Over 9 petabytes of data are backed up to the LiveVault cloud, and over 1 million files are protected every day. Let's begin by logging into a customer account that already has a few servers under protection. When you log in, LiveVault displays a navigation tree on the left-hand side. The customer record is shown at the top, and beneath this you see an administrator role record. An administrator can create other role records with just a subset of the administrative privileges. For this example, the customer has created a restore-only role. All LiveVault user accounts are located under a role record, and that record defines what rights and privileges they have. By clicking the plus sign next to a role, we can see the users that are assigned to that particular role. You can also see that there are two groups. Uh, this customer has created groups to contain the servers that are already under LiveVault protection. You can also see that this customer has a Turbo Restore appliance. The administrator has just installed the LiveVault agent on an additional server for which LiveVault protection is desired. The host name is SQL01, and we see that server in the list. Let's set the backup policy for this server now by clicking on that server's name. This displays the new computer wizard. By default, the name for this server in the LiveVault interface will be the host name. Down below, we see that we have the option of assigning this server to the Turbo Restore appliance, which will then send the backups to the off-site vaults. This has already been selected here, and you can see the name of the TRA is shown in the drop-down box. So we'll save these settings, and this will bring up the Getting Started screen. The LiveVault agent has automatically detected that SQL is on this server and thus is offering to create both a standard backup policy and a SQL aware policy to protect some or all of the SQL databases. LiveVault is also Exchange aware, but Exchange is not running on this particular server. First, let's back up the SQL databases by clicking the Add New SQL Server policy. This will display the selection tab, the first of three tabs used to create a backup policy. Let's give the policy a meaningful name, such as SQL Policy. To back up the entire SQL instance, all that is needed is to check the SQL01 box over here on the right-hand pane. However, perhaps we only want to use LiveVault cloud-based backup for some of the databases. By clicking the plus sign next to the server name over here, and then clicking on SQL01, I can see a list of the different databases. So, let's say I wanted to back up the MSDB database and the master database, but not the model database. I can just check off the particular ones that I want. The next part in setting a backup policy is the Selection tab. By default, LiveVault will back up first to the TRA and then to the off-site vaults every 15 minutes, 24 hours a day. This is what we call our continuous or every 15 minute backup schedule. This should give us 96 backup versions every 24 hours. Over 90% of LiveVault customers use this default schedule. We will also use it and therefore we can move right on to the Options tab, the third part of setting a backup policy. The only actions we need to take here are to select the history retention that we want and whether or not we want the LiveVault service to truncate the SQL transaction logs after each backup. The choices on retentions are our standard 30 days, 90 days, 1 year, or 7 year retentions. So if 30 day retention is what I needed, we could simply select that. The final step is a confirmation screen, where I can see the different settings and the different databases that we have elected for backup, and if I'm happy with that, I can simply say done. Now, let's create a standard policy to protect the files and directories on this server. We can also elect to back up the system state if we want to be able to do a full system disaster recovery later, if required. As before, we enter a meaningful policy name and then select what is to be backed up.
If we want to back up the entire server, including the operating system and the system state, only three checks are required. I can check off the C drive, the E drive, and select the backup system state box here on the lower left. However, we can be as specific as we wish and back up or exclude certain directories, files, or file types. For example, by clicking on the plus sign next to the server name, and then clicking on the plus sign next to C. I can see a list of the contents on the C folder here, and by scrolling down I see that there's a temporary folder, and maybe I know that I do not need to back that up. I do not need to restore it. I can simply uncheck it. Also, you can see down below here there's an advanced button. This would allow us to exclude particular file types if we wanted to do that by creating our own rules. You can see that by clicking up above, there are three rules already created, uh, two include rules and then the exclude rule. But I'm going to create a new rule here. I'm going to make it an exclude rule. I'm going to exclude everything that ends with dot tm, dot tmp uh, anywhere on the C drive and click OK. So this is a rule that says no matter where the temp files occur on the C drive, please don't back them up. Now, after selecting, after clicking OK, the Schedule tab and the Options tab here are similar to what we just saw. So I can move directly to the confirmation screen here and press the Done button in order to create that backup policy. Now, let's do a restore. We will restore from one of the servers that is already under protection. If I click the Application Server group, you can see that there's an Exchange server and a SQL server. So if I click on the SQL server here, we will see a summary display about that particular machine. It is actually currently backing up at this very moment. And you will notice that there's a Restore tab up here. I'll go ahead and click on that. The first restore screen uh, shows me any recent restores that have been done, and there is a new restore button, which I will click. The first restore screen allows us to select how the data should be delivered. The default, the left-hand choice, is the Internet choice, and this includes the Turbo Restore appliance case. If there is a TRA, the agent is smart enough to automatically fetch the data from there, from the most efficient source. The right-hand choice is used to have the restored data shipped overnight delivery from the data center. Uh, there is an extra charge for this service. Because this is a SQL server, the next screen allows us to say whether we want to do a files and directories restore or a standard restore. We will just do a restore of a few files and directories and take the default here. The Restore screen looks very much like the Backup Selection screen, except now we can choose what we want to restore. Let's give the Restore job a name, such as Demo Restore, and then we can choose what it is that we want to recover and what versions we want to recover from. By default, LiveVault is showing me the most recent restorable backup version that's available. But with this drop-down, I can see any of the days for which backups are available, and any particular day, I can see all the different backup versions that are available from that particular day. Now, we will browse to a demo data directory here, where there are a couple little files that we can restore. So if these are the two files I need, I could simply put check marks next to each of them. There is an Options tab that allows you to control the handling of duplicate file names and allows us to redirect the restore to a different server, but the defaults are okay for now, so we'll just press the Next button and go on to the confirmation screen. If I'm happy with the versions and the options and the list of files and directories to be restored, I can simply click the Done button here, and this will cause the restore job to start. When the restore finishes, I will get an email message, so I don't have to watch this interface. But this particular restore only took two seconds and restored 69 megabytes, in this case, from the Turbo Restore appliance. This concludes a brief LiveVault demo. 
There are many other options and settings of interest in a production environment, and we encourage you to learn more or to try the LiveVault service for yourself.